Hello, YouTube. This is Umilzo3. In the previous lesson, we brought up the concept of dunders, and we basically said that dunders are special functions that allow us to basically specify what the behavior would be if we tried adding two instances of a class together, or multiplying two instances, or finding the modular arithmetic of two instances, or seeing if one instance was less than or equal to another instance, because typically those types of operations are only defined for simple things like uh, like numerical numerical values, like insert floats. But what we did in the previous video is we basically created a person class. So you might remember we have a person class here and it has a constructor. And we said the function of this constructor is to assign the instance variables x and y, self.x and self.y, to the parameters x and y that are being passed into the constructor when the point object is first created. And then we also have the get magnitude method. So we might be thinking, what is p here? And so remember, if we scroll all the way up to the top, we imported a function called pow from the math module. And we said to Python that we're going to call it p. So that would basically, if you said p of x, y, it would basically have the effect of raising x to the y power. So hopefully that's clear to you. And so that, and then, you know, that's basically a Pythagorean theorem calculation like we talked about in the previous video. But that would give you the two dimensional distance between a particular instance of the point class and the origin, right? And then we also had void instance methods for moving a particular instance right or left by adjusting the x coordinate, or for moving a particular instance up or down by adjusting the y coordinate for that instance, okay? And then we also, in lesson 35, talked a little bit about the string method, right? This str function. And you can see two underscores before and after it. And it's a string representation of a point instance, okay? So basically, we can specify to Python what we want to have printed, what we want the output to be if we try printing an instance of the point class, if we try printing an object, okay? And so here we specify that we're going to see this point exists at x, y equals, and then a parentheses, and then the string representation of the x coordinate, because we're not allowed to concatenate a string with an interfloat, and then a comma, and then a string representation of the y coordinate for that particular instance, and then finally an ending parentheses. And then remember, we talk about these dunders, and we say that dunders are special functions where basically, if you spell them in a particular way, it'll specify the behavior of the point objects that would come out as a result of A plus B. So if you have two point objects, A and B, and they both have X and Y coordinates, right? Because those are basically initialized when the two point objects are created. Remember in the init, in the constructor, self.x and self.y took values, okay? And so basically we can use those values and basically we can define the behavior of what it means to add one point object to another point object. So this dunder only accepts one input. It's an instance method, which is why we need self here, but basically it only accepts one input because we call it on an instance. And then once we're calling on an instance, we only need one more instance to bring into the function. And now you have two point objects that you can add together. The result is a point where the X coordinate is going to be assigned to the sum of the two X coordinates of the two points that you started with. And the Y coordinate of the resultant point is gonna be the sum of the Y coordinates of the two points that you started with. We also talked about the dunder for subtraction. So if you wanna talk about A minus B, where A and B are two points, you would do sub, right? Underscore, underscore, sub underscore underscore and that's why it's called a dunder it's because it's double underscore on both sides okay so hopefully that's clear to you but we get to specify what this functionality is going to be so i just picked intuitive definitions i said well if you're going to subtract one point from another you might as well just subtract the x coordinates to get the result in x coordinate and you might as well just subtract the y coordinates to get the result in y coordinate okay so those were basically two of the dunders that we talked about we talked about 12 of them we also talked about multiply true division, floor division, right? That's like integer based division. We talked about the modular, that's six. Uh, power, right? What if you want to take one point and raise it to another point? You could just do the exponentiation of the x coordinate as the result in x coordinate and the exponentiation of the y coordinate as the result in y coordinate. But if you had wanted to do 122 for this, then whenever you raise one point to another point, the resultant point will always have a y coordinate of 122. So hopefully that's clear to you and it's up to you what you want these things to mean. What do you want a to the power of b to mean? What do you want a over b to mean? Okay, so that's like, how many do we have there? Three, four, five, six, seven, that's already seven. Then we talked about less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, and equal to. So what does it mean to say that one point is less than another point? 
Well, what we did is we said self.getMagnitude is less than other.getMagnitude. It's going to return the result of that Boolean. And remember the getMagnitude function, we talked about that in the previous lesson, but it's a Pythagorean theorem calculation of the shortest distance between the origin and the point that you're at. So basically, it's just asking if my point is closer to the origin than the other point. And if it is, then we would say that my point is less than the other point. OK, so we can try a couple of examples. Let's just try a couple of things. I'm printing some things on the console, but try to ignore these things. Right. So what we're just going to do is I just ha I just created these two points. Remember, I created two points that started at the origin. OK, and then we're going to go ahead and move a and b and then we're going to print a and b okay and so that's basically what you see right here this is the first time that we start testing the point class okay so go ahead and look at these two lines and then we can test out the addition dunder so a plus b works fine it's just the sum of the coordinates according to how we defined that dunder okay a to the b it's just the exponentiation of the x coordinate and the exponentiation of the y coordinate according to how we define the dunder a greater than or equal to b Yes, because my point is at least as far away from the origin as the other point. A equal to B? No, because one of my coordinates is different from the other point's coordinates. Okay, so those are all up to us how we define those things, and hopefully that's clear to you. I want to talk about <clears throat> three new dunders in this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the length dunder. So we're already familiar with the length of a string. We're familiar with the length of a list or a set or a tuple or a dictionary. Okay. But what we're going to do is we can actually, it turns out that we can actually treat an instance, we can actually treat an object as an iterable that has a length, okay? So we can actually define what it means to have the length of a point instance or the length of a person object. We can specify, literally, we can tell Python what we would want an operation like that to return. It turns out that for any instance x of a class C, when we have a dunder for the length of x, when we're going to tell Python what length of x would return for some instance x, remember, we're not talking about just an iterable, we're not talking about a string or list anymore, we're just talking about an instance and some object, some example object x that we've created, what's the length of it? Well, I don't know, so let's see how we define it in the dunder. What we're going to do is we're going to say that the length of a point is going to be the integer form. So what I'm saying here is that the length of x must always return an integer. That's, that always has to be the case. I tried, I tried this out um, by not having int here, but it didn't work. Okay, so it has to be the integer form of apps val. Okay, that doesn't look like there's an apps val function that we've talked about. So if you scroll all the way up to the top, it turns out that the math module actually has a function called fabs. Okay, and I don't know why there's an F there, but this is actually absolute value. So if you say math.fabs of negative two, it would give you 2.0 because the method is instructed to return a float. Okay, I believe so. You can go ahead and scroll over it. Yep, it's, and this is documentation. This is doc strings, right? You scroll over it and it says return the absolute value of the float X and we're gonna go ahead and import it. We're gonna call it apps val, apps val. Okay, so what you can go ahead and do is you could say, I want the integer form of the absolute value of the X coordinate of the instance that I'm talking about plus the absolute value of the y coordinate for the instance that I'm talking about. And that would be the length of a point. Absolute value of x coordinate plus absolute value of y coordinate. And then if that's not an integer, make it an integer. So let's go ahead and try that out. What we're going to do is, you know, we, we printed the true and the false here for these two booleans on 289 and 290. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get the length of a, okay? And we know that A here, the, the A took the coordinates, and we know that A has an X coordinate of 15 and a Y coordinate of three. So now we can test that our length dunder works appropriately, and indeed it returns 18 as the length of that instance, because that's what we decided for the dunder. It's just two underscores, and then LEN, and then two underscores, and then self in parentheses, and then that allows you to just say the length of an object. You just say LEN of X for some instance X. We can also talk about getting an item. So this basically this allows us to treat an object as if it were an iterable. So this is just an example and we can try out other examples, but let me show you what I mean. What we're gonna do is we're going to try to basically treat a point object as if it were a dictionary, okay? So you remember that dictionaries is basically a set of key value pairs, okay? So basically, with a list, you're just putting um, index positions into square brackets. So you could just put in list of zero or list of two or list of five, right? Same thing with tuples. But with dictionaries, you put in keys, right? And the keys don't just have to be integers, right? They could be 
strings, they could be floats, they could even be booleans, you know, you could have a true key and a false key, right? And so basically what we have here is we're going to basically treat the instance of our object, we're going to treat a particular example object, a particular example point as if it's a dictionary, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to apply a key to that dictionary. So let's say x is a point, then we could say x of and then length, and then I could specify what value I want to have returned if I fed this key into this instance. So it's treating the instance, which is not really an iterable, but we're allowed to treat as an iterable, feed a key into it. We can treat it like a dictionary as long as we specify this dunder. It's called the get item dunder. And you can see that it passes an item because we're going to need to specify the programmer is going to need to specify like a key. They're going to need to specify an index position, an input that they want to get. And then we'll be able to specify some aspect of that instance, depending on the key that they pass in. So what we're going to do is we have, we're going to throw an exception if they give us a, a key that we don't, that we don't uh, desire. So what we're going to do, is we're gonna say that for a particular point instance, these are gonna be the valid keys. So we're gonna say that they can say for a particular, let's let's call a point instance P. So we're gonna say they can call P of X value. They could type in X value. And then we say, if they if item is equal to X value, give, give us the X coordinate of that point. Okay, if they say, oh, give me the Y value, if this is the key that they put into that instance, right? If they say P of, and then they have Y value in square brackets, that's string in square brackets, we'll give them the Y coordinate, okay? Otherwise, if item is equal to length, we could give the length of that instance. What's the length of the instance? Well, we define that up here, so it calls on another dunder, okay? But this is gonna throw an exception if the user tries to enter a key any other than these five. So if they say X value, give them X. If they say Y value, give them the Y of that instance. If they say length, give them the length of that instance. We just talked about what that would return. If they say Pythagorean magnitude, remember that two-dimensional Pythagorean calculation we did to get the distance between a particular point instance and the origin zero, zero. Otherwise, if they just said self, we would go ahead and return self. If they don't give us something in this key, we would just go ahead and tell them that they need to plug in either X value, Y value, length, Pythagorean magnitude or self, right? And so it would either give them the point itself or it would give them the two dimensional magnitude or the length as we defined it in the dunder or the Y coordinate or the X coordinate. And remember that these backslashes mean that this is an escape sequence. So this is what would be printed. So now let's go ahead and say print A of X value. So we wanna get the X value for the instance A. This is basically treating the instance as though it's a dictionary that we can grab a value from, okay? So now if we go ahead and run it, um, you can see the 15 there. So that corresponds with the X value of A, okay? But if you had said something else, if you had said A of potato, that's not a valued key. And so an exception would be thrown and it would say you need to plug in X value, Y value, length, Pythagorean magnitude or self, okay? So hopefully that's clear to you. There's also a set item dunder. So this is the last one. This one is gonna take in two arguments. It's similar. We're still gonna now treat the instance as a dictionary again. But now, instead of treating the instance as a dictionary where we can grab information about the instance as though it were values, you know, values in a dictionary, we're going to be able to modify aspects of an instance by basically the analogy is gonna be that we're going to modify values at particular keys. So let me show you what I mean by that. So the set item dunder allows us to treat an object as if it's a dictionary and we're going to change one of the values at one of the keys. And we're going to basically allow the user to basically change the x value, the y value, um, or, uh, or the, uh, uh, let me go ahead and change this. We're only going to allow them to change the x value or the y value. Um, of a particular point, right? Because the other things were calculated, like the length of a point, the two dimensional distance of a point, we wouldn't really want to let the user just type those in. Those are sort of calculated. The things that are really modifiable are the X and Y coordinates, right? And then the other things are sort of calculated from math. And so you would just say, okay, well, if they wanna specify the X value, if they specify the X value as the first argument, you know, if they say, basically, if they say for a particular point P, if they say P of, and then x value, and then they say equals, and then to some x value, it would change the x value to whatever that value is, right? So you can say it would go ahead and reassign x, the x coordinates of value, okay? But if you had went ahead and said y value for the key in the dictionary, then it would go ahead and update the y value to whatever the value is that you passed into the function. 
Okay, and then the assertion error, if they said that they wanted to change something other than the X value to the Y value, we would tell them that they need to plug in X value or Y value or, uh, or Y value. Okay, so let's just go ahead and try this. I wanna show you what I mean with all this stuff. Okay, so what we do is we have this point 15.3 here. Remember, this is the point 15.3 after we moved it, right? And then what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say A of X value is equal to B of Y value um, times two, and then we're gonna print A. So here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna comment out a couple of lines of code. Okay, so I just wanna go ahead and show you what's gonna happen here. So I'm just gonna comment these out. So we're still doing pretty well on time here, but I just wanna give you, an, give you a sense of how these last three dunders are gonna work. So the last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna print the representations of A and B just immediately after we create the, uh, immediately after we create the, sorry, there was a syntax error. Imme sorry, immediately after we create these point objects, we're going to go ahead and print them, right? So we uh, point exists at 15, three and point exists at two, one, right? And then we had the issue when we had the invalid key for the get item dunder. And now we try the set item dunder. So now we say that A of X value is equal to B of Y value times two. So basically what it does is it takes the Y value at B, this is using the get item dunder and this reassignment is using the set item dunder. So now the new X value of the A instance is gonna be two. So hopefully that's clear to you because, two, because one times two is two. So that sort of demonstrates the use of the set item and get item dunders. And those can be helpful for treating an instance as though it's a dictionary that you can either retrieve values from or change the information of. So hopefully that's clear. We only have a few minutes. I wanna talk about something called pass. So basically pass is a keyword that does nothing at all. Basically it's a placeholder. And if Python reads it, it basically just says, okay, sounds good to me. And it's just gonna keep proceeding through the code as if it hadn't read that line. It's good if you just intentionally don't want to do something. So it's like a filler keyword and it doesn't end any iterations. It's not like continue, right? Remember continue ends a current iteration, but pass basically does nothing at all. So basically if we have cookie equals 10, if it's not the case that the, um, that the integer division of cookie and two is five, then I want you to print uh, 10, right, right? We would print cookie and pass, but otherwise we would print two, right? So you can see it just reads the pass and then it prints two. That's why that's the first thing printed to the console, right? And the same thing could work for basically in a for loop, right? If you could say for S in range of 10, right? Okay, so if it's not the case that S is equal to three, just pass, okay? And so it says read pass, okay? Okay, I'm passing, right? But it's basically, it says a null operation, nothing happens, okay? So you can scroll over it to learn more. But then otherwise, and you know, otherwise the only other Boolean is S is equal to three, in which case it would do three to the power of three. So that's why you go ahead and see the 27 there. The last thing we need to talk about is garbage collection. Basically what we can do is we can say del X for a particular variable X. And if we say DEL and then a variable name, what it does is it basically clears the value of that variable from Python memory. So that means that X would no longer hold what value it previously did. And that frees up memory and basically it would allow the program to run a little bit more efficiently because you don't wanna, get, you don't wanna keep track of more information than you have to. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and say E equals 24, okay? And then we're gonna say print a V. Okay, and so we can go ahead and run it. And indeed we get the 24 there. And then we're gonna say delete E and we're gonna try it, we're gonna do a try block. So we're gonna try to print E after we deleted it. But as you might expect, that's gonna throw an issue. So remember in lesson 17 and 18, we talked about a name errors, basically when we call a variable that hasn't been assigned a value. So now let's go ahead and figure out whether we can get, so after we go ahead and print the 24 when the value of E was still retained, right? But then it gets deleted and then we can't print a value of E, it just says, I don't know what E is, so it runs the exception code, okay? It turns out you can actually delete multiple variables at the same time, and you don't have to just delete something simple like an int or a string, you could delete a data structure, like the list Y or the tuple Z, okay? And the way you delete multiple elements is by comma, comma separated, okay? And so this is called garbage collection, and it basically removes references to values if you no longer need to keep track of those values anymore. Okay, so basically what it, what it does is it runs the try block. So it says, I'll try Y, but then it's not able to print this list, right? It, it's not able to get to any of the rest of this code because after it runs this successful statement, it said, I have trouble with, I had trouble with Y or Z, sorry, dude. 
Okay, and then it says go back to lesson 17 or 18 if you don't understand exceptions, because we said finally block regardless, finally block runs regardless of whether the try block was completely successful or not. So that was some more dunders in the Dell statement and the past statement. Hopefully that's clear to you. And from emails out three, thanks for watching and please subscribe.